Welcome, this is Monty once again from DPL Surveillance Equipment. Um, I'm at the park where I normally uh, work out, uh, or do my walk, I'm sorry, not work out, I do my five mile walk. I call it the meditation contemplation walk. So when you hear the cars go by and such, that's because I'm at the park and it's a night, bright, nice and bright sunny day. Uh, who knows, 70, 75 degrees or something, slight breeze going on. Uh, <laughs> um, my wife is sending me crazy text messages while I record this podcast. Um, anyway, yeah, we run a full service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products. We have 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. Uh, all of our products are lifetime guaranteed and warranted. A huge amount of content on our website. A lot of it has nothing to do with uh, surveillance and counter surveillance equipment. Uh, uh, we just want to educate people. We want to have, we want people to have good information, hopefully about cryptocurrencies, about economics and finance, about health and fitness, about, um, uh, all sorts of topics. You, you name it. We're, uh, talking about it. Um, we do accept Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bcash, um, the website design is relatively new. Go go there and patronize it. And for your crypto millionaires, drop down some of that big crypto earnings. Um, I like you guys. We and we we got in a little bit earlier, so we're doing just fine. So we know fully well that there are some people who have more discretionary income than others. That's for sure. Um, let's see. So what are we doing today? We're, we're going to be talking about. Um, Social Security, um, there's a number of people who, uh, I think the baby boomer generation, are starting to retire. A number of them can at least, a number of them can at least uh, get um, the minimum, they meet the minimum uh, requirements, age requirements to collect Social Security. Uh, so this may hit home with a few people, okay? Um, let's see. What is the name of this article today? By the way, good question. Uh, the name of this article, uh, Social Security Fixes That Would Help Widows, the Oldest Old and Low and, and Low Earners. Again, it's called Social Security Fixes That Would Help Widows, uh, the Oldest Old and Low Earners. Okay, so what is this article all about? Let's, let's dig into it and see. Um, uh, this is all about changes and the uh, or improvements in the existing Social Security system. And the first question is, uh, will we see them implemented? We all know that so the Social Security system needs reforming to keep it solvent so Americans will continue receiving their promised benefits. But Social Security also could be improved to better assist the economically vulnerable. A recent paper from the Center for Retirement Research or CRR, at Boston College discusses policy proposals that could do this by helping widows, the oldest old and very low earners. I, um, the author says, I spoke with Alicia Monell, the center's director, to learn more about why they're needed, how they'd work, and whether, or not, and whether we might see them implemented. Improving widows' benefits. Okay, uh, currently, a wife is entitled to two types of Social Security benefits. One, a spouse's benefit that will, that will, as the CRR report puts it, top up her own retirement benefit to 50% of what Social Security calls her husband's primary insurance amount. And two, a widow's benefit that will equal 100% of her deceased husband's benefit if it exceeds her own worker benefit. Translation. <laughs> For a one-earner couple, the widow's benefit would equal 67% of the total benefits the household received when both spouses were alive. For a two-earner couple with equal earnings, the widow would get just 50% of the total benefits. That's viewed as a big cut when a spouse dies, said Manel. Again, Manel, this is a, a Alicia Manel. Uh, again, she's... Uh, the, the center's director. Um, one popular proposal in a 2017 bill by Representative Al Lawson, Democrat out of Florida, 
would increase the widow benefit to 75% of the amount uh, 75% of the amount the household received um, when both members of the couple when, when both members of the couple were still alive to target the higher benefit to low income widows the proposal would typically limit the dollar amount of the increased widow benefit to the amount received by a worker beneficiary when average uh, earnings with with average earnings, so again the proposal uh, looks like um, it would increase the the widow benefit to seventy five percent of the amount the household received when both members of the couple were still alive uh, to target the higher benefit to low income widows. The proposal would typically limit the dollar amount of the increased widow benefit to the amount received by a worker beneficiary with average earnings. That's one proposal. An alternative and somewhat more generous version, uh, Manel's report says, would give a widow 100% of her own Social Security benefit and 75% of her deceased spouse, uh, spouse's benefit. That indeed looks like a more generous uh, proposal, uh, that, uh, that alternative. Helping the old is old. Financially, financial vulnerability tends to worsen for retirees when they reach 85 and older due to health costs and long-term care costs. This has and will become even more true with the disappearance of private pensions and increased longevity, requiring more people to make their money last longer. The CRR report mentions two proposals aimed at protecting the oldest old. Um, Currently, Social Security boosts benefits annually with cost of living adjustments in line with the Consumer Price Index, or CPI. But Monell said the CPI dramatically understates inflation for the elderly due to health care costs. As a result, she notes the real purchasing power of Social Security benefits declines over time. And if you live a very long time, it declines in a meaningful, meaningful way. I agree with her. Um, as you get older, particularly the, uh, the older people... Their, their expenses are not the same as younger people. Uh, your long-term care costs are, are, are astronomical. Your health care costs are astronomical. So to have, a, to have a, a, a new inflation index for the elderly would definitely be um, uh, very important. One proposal would revise Social Security's inflation index to better represent health spending by the elderly. It would increase benefits yearly based upon what's known as the Consumer Price Index for the Elderly or the CPIE. The other proposal would, would provide an automatic 5% increase in monthly secur- Social Security benefits at age 85, 85. The dollar amount of this increase would be limited to the average retired worker benefit to target the change to lower income older retire- retirees. Protecting the lowest lifetime earners um, protecting the lowest lifetime earners. Currently, workers with very low earnings over their careers are eligible for a special minimum Social Security benefit cre- created in 1972. This benefit was originally designed to keep full career workers out of poverty in, in, in retirement. But the CRR report says the benefit is insufficient and is rapidly becoming irrelevant. I didn't know there was a special minimum Social Security benefit. But uh, according to this article, <coughs> it was indeed created in 1972. And um, maybe you guys want to ask about that and see if they can shed any light on this special minimum Social Security benefit. Um, soon, the researchers say no new retirees will receive it at all. A 2014 report from the Social Security Administration said the minimum benefit is projected to be uh, functionally obsolete for retired workers beginning with those who will become eligible for benefits between 2017 and 2023. To fix this, one proposal would increase the minimum benefit to 125% of the poverty level and adjust the initial benefit for the future by indexing it to wages, w- wages, not prices as it is today. Under the present system, the minimum benefit isn't growing enough to keep up with wages. These proposals make a lot of sense, but in this hyper-political uh, strident era with federal budget deficit projected to top a uh, trillion dollars in, in 2020 and Social Security's solvency on the line, are we likely to see any of them implemented? It's very hard for me to even conceive of people getting around the table right now to solve these problems 
Monell lamented, lamented. Clearly, the big issue for Social Security is that revenues will fall short of promised benefits, but when people get in the room to come up with solutions, it would be nice to remedy some of, some of these other outdated aspects of the program as well. Making these changes wouldn't be, uh, making these changes wouldn't be instead of solving Social Security solvency's problem. Uh, that's kind of weird. Uh, making these changes wouldn't be, uh, I guess, wouldn't be difficult. Instead of solving, solving Social Security solv- solvency problem, Manel noted, there would be other problems to think about as you're doing it, she said. So basically, Manel is saying that um, amongst all of the things to discuss and solve, this, this really shouldn't be a major issue. Um, making some slight improvements. Okay, let's see how, how this is supposed to be remedied, okay? The cost to make these changes for vulnerable Americans, Monell said, are relatively small. None, she added, are political lightning rods. She believes policymakers could fairly easily find offsets in the Social Security program to pay for them. The goal, uh, the Boston College researchers say, is to find options for modernizing Social Security, Social Security that would be effective that would be both effective and fiscally responsible. So again, um, Alicia Monell out of the Boston Center for uh, Retirement Research. Uh, she's the center's director. And um, I think this is very timely and very good and very practical because a lot of these um, senators and Republicans they need to know that you guys are concerned. I'm a little bit further away from ever collecting any Social Security because I'm a little bit younger. But according to Representative, uh, this bill is sponsored by Representative Al Lawson, a Democrat, Democrat out of Florida. Um, I guess you guys want to send this to him, talk to him about these improvements, and see if we can improve the Social Security system because a larger and larger percentage of the demographic of America is indeed in a position and, and, and are indeed collecting Social Security. So there's a large constituency uh, definitely that are impacted. And, you know, you guys need to go to your congressman, go to your senator, and your local districts, and, and you can share this article or forward it to them or whatever, have this discussion and see whether or not they consider it serious enough so that uh, if they want to get reelected, they know that they need to make these types of improvements. Mainly because, as the, as the article mentions, health care costs, long-term care, these costs are astronomical, and, and, and we need to see more done for the elderly, definitely, um, and uh, so we can shore up the system and fix it, okay? So as I like to say at the, at the conclusion of every uh, article, every podcast, rather, I'll keep your eyes and ears open, you guys, and stay safe out there, and we'll talk to you later.